Hi, I'm Robert, tech lead for our client solution specialist team here at Guyford Standoff Systems. Today, we're going to go over what could be called the foundation, or backbone if you will, of any of our tensioned rod or wire systems, the turnbuckle. Turnbuckles attach to a surface and allow us to stretch or tension the rod or wire in place, giving us the means to support graphics, shelving, really a variety of materials for almost any display application. First, let's go over a few of the tools that you'll need for the install most of which we can supply here at Guyford Standoff Systems. In most cases, you're going to need a drill motor. In almost all the applications, you'll find you'll need an Allen wrench set or hex bits for your drill motor. A good pair of bypass cutters is a must when you're cutting our wires. In the case of our WSA1 and A6 turnbuckles, you're going to need a half inch wrench to tighten up the jam nuts. There are a few other specialty drivers that you may find you need, but again, we'll help you pick out the ones you might need and make sure you get them. So, let's get started. This is the Wirelight 840 top or bottom mount turnbuckle. It'll come pre-assembled with mounting hardware, but first, you'll need to unscrew the turnbuckle body and threaded insert to gain access to the mounting plate. So in this case we already have the top mount in place and we're going to begin by threading the wire through. It'll stop at the swage steel wall and we'll simply thread it on. When that's complete, set the set screw to avoid having it unscrew on you. Now at this point we also have our bottom pilot hole in place. We've gone ahead and run a plumb bob ahead of time and we're ready to go ahead and mount up the base turnbuckle with the wire just hanging free. So you'll use the supplied number eight screw to mount the base to the surface. We'll thread in the supplied 7 eighths, 5 sixteenths, 18 set screw. and then set the small set screw at the base, which will prevent that screw from backing out on you when you're trying to work the turnbuckle. We'll thread the turnbuckle body down onto the set screw, and then back it off a few turns. It's important to remember that the concept here is to stretch the wire. The more wire you have, the more gap you're gonna need. In this case, with a short wire, about an eighth of an inch should be good enough for us. Then we'll get our bypass cutters, Bring down the wire nice and firm, and then cut it off just below the top set screw. Put the wire right in the hole. Pull it down as firmly as you can, and then set this set screw against it. Nice and tight, so it can't come out on you later. Now. We're going to go ahead and begin tensioning our wire by rotating the turnbuckle body down onto the threads. When you get it tight, you'll know. The last step here is to set the set screw at the bottom of the turnbuckle body against the threads. It doesn't have to be too tight, but enough to keep it from backing off later. And there we have a complete install. So, in longer wire applications, you may need extra stretch. So in this case, we'll be using the WLA41 longer turnbuckle. Again, we're gonna leave ourselves a gap, and in this case, we wanna make it about equidistant, as much as possible, between this gap and this gap, so that we, when we close the turnbuckle up, it'll draw both of those parts together. Again, bring the wire down, and trim it off just below the upper set screw. Set the wire in its hole. Set the top set screw against it. Let's get it in there nice and firm. So at this point, with the wire mounted, we're going to go ahead and rotate the center portion of this turnbuckle. Hold on to the top portion to keep it from rotating on you, and the two pieces will draw together. end up with a small gap, either the top or the bottom, 
you can just go ahead and finish off by rotating whichever direction you need to close it up. This will give you a nice seamless install. The last step again is to set the set screw at the base against the threads and prevent the turnbuckle from backing off on you. In this section we're going to cover the WSA1. This is the uh, main turnbuckle for our wire suspension system mounted on a horizontal plane. You shouldn't have to do much with this. When you get it, it should be completely assembled and ready to go. The most you may have to do is take a 5 30 seconds hex wrench, set it in this screw in the base, and a half inch opened end wrench. Just make sure that this bottom nut is snugged up. This will keep the part from rotating on you after you've installed it. So we're going to mount this using three pre-drilled pilot holes with the three included screws. There you go. We'll bring our wire down. These two set screws trap the wire in the head of the turnbuckle. All we have to do is bring the wire down just past the bottom one and cut it off. Place the wire in the hole. You may need to back these set screws off. Tighten up the set screws. And our wire's in place. All that's left to do now is tension it by turning the turnbuckle body. We'll hold the head with one hand and rotate the body. As we do this, it draws these two pieces together and tensions the wire. So the very last step here is to go ahead and set the jam nuts that are on either side of the turnbuckle body against it. These will lock it in place and prevent it from rotating or loosening later. There we go, it's locked up tight, can't go anywhere, and we got a nice tension on the wire. This is the EZATW 125 This is the bottom turnbuckle in most of your 8th inch wire applications. Our 8th inch wire is used in heavier applications. As you can see, it's quite a bit larger than the other wires we've shown you. These will come pre-assembled also. And there's a couple important steps that we've got to go through before we can use it. First one being remove this small set screw on the side using a 332nd hex wrench. Set this little guy aside and don't lose it. The next step is to remove the turnbuckle base from the hood. This can be a little tricky sometimes, but you can usually get a hold of it with your fingers, use your thumb. If you get really stuck, you can run a screw up into the threaded hole, pinch against it, and rotate it out. So once we've got this disassembled, you'll see we've got three pieces and a couple set screws. The first step is to mount the turnbuckle base to the surface that you'll be mounting to. This can be mounted with a variety of hardware, and here we're going to use a wood hanger screw, which is a very common application when you just need to mount the turnbuckle onto a surface without a mounting plate. This is our HD WHS3 wood hanger screw. As you can see, it doesn't have a head on it, so there's only a couple ways to drive them in. One being a pair of nuts put onto the end, but this can be a slow and tedious procedure, so we recommend purchasing one of our wood hanger screwdrivers. These can be put in any drill motor and used to drive these in. Hold the threaded, the machine threaded end up against the driver and run your drill up slowly. It'll draw the wood hanger screw down into the driver and get you ready to drive it into a quarter inch pilot hole. Now we'll take the turnbuckle mount, 
and screw it down onto that threaded portion that's sticking out. Just snug it down. Once we have the turnbuckle mount in place, we're going to bring our wire down and we're going to cut the wire off just at or above the top of the mount. Now it's time to slide your parts up onto the wire. Start with the turnbuckle body. Just get it up and out of the way. The next part that needs to go on is the wire terminator. This is the part that will stop the wire from passing through the turnbuckle body. We'll just thread it on. Since we know we cut our wire just about even with the turnbuckle mount, we'll have it extend out just about a sixteenth of an inch. Check your height and we should have just about an eighth of an inch gap between the turnbuckle mount and the wire terminator. Once you have that established, go ahead and tighten that set screw up. Make sure you really torque that down. You don't want that wire popping out on you while you're tensioning the turnbuckle. Once it's there, and we're sure we have a good gap, Go ahead and slide the turnbuckle body down and allow the tip to come up even with the face of the turnbuckle body. Carefully thread that on to the turnbuckle mount. Make sure you don't cross thread these. We have a steel mount and an aluminum body. As you do that, you'll notice the wire starts to tighten. And we're going to draw that gap closed as we actually stretch the wire. last step is to take that little nylon tip set screw I told you not to lose. Use your 3.30 seconds hex wrench. Set it in that hole. Just snug it down. This will prevent the turnbuckle body from rotating. And lock the whole thing up. The Easy ATW 125 wire turnbuckle. If more tension is needed, Reverse the procedure and move the wire terminator up in 1 8 inch increments. So there you have it. Three parts representing just a small sample of the many products we have that will allow you to tension rod or wire in place. In this application, we've done all perpendicular mounts, but keep in mind that we have products that will allow you to mount parallel to a wall surface or at any angle. Be sure to visit our website at www.standoffsystems.com to take a look at the many products we have available there and be sure if you have any questions about anything you see there or anything you've seen here today to give us a call at 775-829-7272 ask for one of our client solution specialists and we'll help you pick out the parts you need so again I'm Robert thanks for visiting